What's up everybody, Alex here and welcome to this Dota Underlord Season 1 Build Guide for Brawnies. Today I'm going to be featuring two separate Brawny builds. One that features Brawnies and Brutes, and this one that you see in front of you featuring Savages and Summoners. This is the same build that I featured in my top 5 early builds of Season 1. Now, this is what the uh, completed mid-game build looks like. Not the end game build, but that's not where we start. We are going to start in the early game. Now, this is what your early game uh, composition looks like, and you have a few options here. Ideally, you want to be at 4 Brawnies relatively quickly. That is ideal. You're also running support damage dealing Hobgen because with um, with Brawnies who have tons of health, uh, especially with the Brutes, what ends up happening is you have these long extended fights and let's go crazy, the benefit of the attack speed bonus uh, is really significant over those longer stretches of time. So a very, very good uh, hero. I also recommend uh, Joel as well if you can. Uh, you're going to be running the two dragons if you can up front uh, in, the, in the rear, sorry. It's going to activate both dragon abilities. So you're going to get corrosive skin on uh, Viper and you're going to get the uh, Mortimer's Kisses, which is such a fantastic skill, especially if you're against summoners. If you're against summoners, you definitely have to prioritize going the dragon composition because other summoners will feed into your brawny bonus, and Mortimer's Kisses does a fantastic AoE job of taking them down. Now, let's say you're not able or you're missing any of these units. A good fill in for any of these units are Nature's Prophet and Magnus. Both are relatively early, so let's say you don't have Juggernaut yet. You can run Magnus instead. Uh, let's say you know you're, you're not able to find a Viper yet and you just have a Snap Fire. You could actually put Nature's Prophet in instead. And the benefit to this is when you run the Nature's Prophet and the uh, the Magnus as a pair, you're benefiting from the Druid Alliance. So they're going to be buffed up uh, by one star level. Uh, you're still maintaining the Brawny bonus, the first tier of it. And you know what? Even in the early game, you could definitely run just the two Druids. I would actually prioritize the two Druids over a third Brawny, like a lone Snapfire without a Viper. Okay? So anyways, the Druids provide you with a lot of flexibility in the game. Uh, and uh, they are units you definitely want to be holding on to as you move into the mid game. In the mid game, you're going to have a few decisions to make. The first unit you're probably going to want to put in is Lycan. Now Lycan's going to activate your uh, first tier of your summoner alliance, especially if you're running your uh, your druids as you should be. Now what you can do from there is you're looking for, your ninth unit's going to be Disruptor. But here's the problem. If you get Lone Druid first, you're going to take Magnus out. Lone Druid and for Magnus, you're still going to benefit from the summoner alliance. You haven't completed it yet, but you're still getting those summoners. Now, if you have a uh, disruptor and you're still at level 8 what I would recommend you do is I'd recommend you actually take out snapfire now you can run disruptor in instead of snapfire and you can keep viper in for now but what I would probably do instead if you're high on HP because of the brawny synergy what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep snapfire in you're gonna take viper out and you're gonna put uh, disruptor in it's not ideal ideally you want to be at 9 so you can keep viper in right uh, Magnus is the odd one out at this point you can probably sell Magnus because you're not gonna necessarily need him you can still use him and hold on to him if you wish but realistically at 9 this is actually a relatively decent composition in the late game, you'll have a few decisions to make if you wish to make your board stronger. The first is with Sanking. If you're still running Magnus, Sanking is a great substitute for Magnus as what he does is he provides you with an excellent stun, some high tier damage, and he maintains your Savage bonus. Now, if you still have Magnus in and you don't have Sanking, you can actually put in Axe instead of uh, Magnus and maintain your Brawny bonus and basically get one of the best units in the game in Axe. Now, if you want to have Sanking as well, it's unlikely you're at 10, but what you can do is you can have Sanking in instead of Magnus to maintain your Savage bonus and then you can put an axe for one of your weaker brawnies. So let's say you know you're not against mages you want to take out Disruptor you can take uh, put an axe in. Uh, or if you want to uh, take out you know let's say you have a two star Beastmaster and a three star Juggernaut take out the Beastmaster right and then you'll want to center axe up a little bit there. So anyways you have options to make axe is a great sub and he should be going in for any of the brawnies he benefits from it right away. Now with regards to items there is a bug that keeps duplicating the items I put in here but anyways uh, um, there's a few key items that I want to kind of uh, put some attention on. First, Vanguard. Vanguard's going to be a good tier 2 item for these guys. You want to extend the fights. Uh, even the, an early t uh, Vanguard on someone like Bristleback is really going to help him uh, keep his uh, Quill Spray up. Now, if you get Bristleback to 3 stars, you're really going to benefit from something like Octarine. Octarine, which reduces the cooldown, is awesome on Bristleback because it makes the Quill Spray happen every basically every t 2 seconds. It stacks. All of a sudden, the DPS of Bristleback skyrockets. Uh, Octarine is also a very good item on Magnus because of the fact that his empower is going to get dropped down to 5 seconds. It's a little more effective on Bristleback honestly, but still a good item. Now, 
Maelstrom is good on uh, Beastmaster, but it's also fantastic on the Juggernaut because of his fast attack speed. Maelstrom uh, is going to benefit from that fast attack speed in order to uh, get those procs off a little quicker. And Butterfly is also a great item for whoever your primary carry is. In this case, it's likely that you'd have Juggernaut at uh, you know two or three stars. He uh, excels with the Blade Fury uh, because basically, Butterfly I should say, because of his Blade Fury, uh, he'll be spinning, but he still auto attacks while he's spinning. Um, Blade Mail is also a great item that you can put on someone like Juggernaut or uh, Bristleback. It helps to extend their health with the armor and it helps to reflect back some damage. Uh, with uh, Blade Mail on someone like Bristleback in the mid game, you'll see a lot of damage being uh, being kind of uh, caused by it because you're going to have 15 armor on a really tanky uh, tanky unit. Before we talk about Brutes and Brownies though, we need to talk about Jewel. The reason why we got to talk about Jewel here is because in the event that you're given friendly fire Hobgen, that's garbage. You're not going to pick him. Only support damage dealing Hobgen works with this build and both uh, variants of Jewel are fine whether you're doing the healing support or the uh, the aggressive tank Jewel. Basically what you're going to get here is he benefits from having uh, the adjacent units with armor so you want to have him surrounded here. You want Bristol back on the edge because he's a tankiest but then you're going to be in a position here where Jewel is going to have a ton of armor and you're probably going to have units uh, up front at least in these three spots he's going to be super tanky and he's going to help keep your brawnies up joel is also a good option all right, so for the second variant of the Brawny build, we've got our Brutes. Now, for Brutes, though, there's a few things you need to consider. The first is the positioning of them. If you're against Assassins, you want to make sure that the Brutes are positioned so that uh, Ogre Magi is in the back because he self-casts Bloodlust. He'll stay in position and he'll apply that Brute debuff to the Assassins that jump on him. Now, um, if you're not against Assassins, what you'll probably want to do is actually put him here. You want them spread out so that they can apply a wide range of that debuff to the units because, again, they prefer to attack those without the debuff on them. Let's assume that you're against assassin so will keep him in this position i do not recommend you run uh, snapfire the reason for this is because in order to run snapfire you have to activate viper um, now the problem with that is that you're actually looking for tree protector and life stealer at tier three those are the units you want you should not be running a viper so you can run snapfire in the very early game but it's not necessarily ideal as a sixth unit you're going to run magnus the reason for this is because magnus is going to activate both your druid alliance and your savage alliance if you're at uh, level five he's actually better than whoever your weakest brawny would be because you're gonna have the druid benefit so one of them will be two stars or possibly both two stars depending on the rng you're maintaining your brutes and now you get your brawnies uh, your savage uh, bonus as well it's not going to be a big deal for savage at this point in the game but still it's something you want to consider if you're kind of weak on the board all right, so in the mid game, you're so close to finishing both brawnies and brutes, and RNG kind of determines what your next step is. This is the lineup for your your uh, your units. Again, if you don't have assassins, you can move your ogre magi somewhere inside. But you have doom and you have disruptor, and you might be thinking, Alex, who do I pick? Well, it all depends. If you're really far ahead on the uh, the brawny kills, you're gonna want to add disruptor. Of course, if you're against uh, you know mages or someone or you know uh, spirits or summoners, you're gonna want to have disruptor anyways. But let's say you're not. Let's say you're seeing a lot of you know warrior builds and others uh, you can run disrupt uh, sorry doom instead and what you'll do is you'll put doom in and he's gonna activate your brawny bonus as well and take a look at how they're positioned they're positioned in a way where they're spread out because again you want to distribute that debuff as far as you can yes uh, you know bristleback is pretty damn tanky but uh, you know we want him in the middle here so we can do his cool spray because his cool spray goes for three uh, cells so it's going to hit over there and it's going to hit to about here as well so that's exactly what we want we want the brutes spread out but again if you need to you're going to put the uh, the disruptor in as well if you're at level nine perfect guess what you do you got both in and this is more or less the completed build as you move into the uh, late game the beautiful thing about this Brute and Brawnies build is that you're only really after one late game hero and that is Axe, the ever so awesome Axe and the best thing about Axe is that he can go in for literally everyone except for Magnus and Treant. Uh, the reason for this is because they're going to benefit from the uh, Druid bonus but let's say you know Beastmaster is still two stars and you have three star others, you just put you put uh, Axe in, you center him up and there you go, perfect. Um, it's done. Uh, let's say, you know, Doom is not, uh, he's at one star, he's not doing work. Take him out. You still maintain the Brute bonus. Axe is perfect because he's bro both a Brute and a Brawny. So the result is that he can go in for pretty much anybody. Now, with regards to items, what you're going to want to do is I want to highlight a few major things. Uh, obviously, so Maelstrom works well on the fast attacking units like Juggernaut and Beastmaster. Uh, Vladimir's offering is fantastic in this build because of the way they're positioned. You're going to benefit from two, uh, from two cells. You're going to get armor, lifesteal, and damage increases look at this two cells range 
It's pretty much everybody except for Lifestealer on the edge. But Lifestealer's got Mask of Madness. He's a passive ability. He has a passive ability, so he's gonna benefit fully from Mask of Madness. It is absolutely an insane item for Lifestealer. It is an auto pick as soon as you see it. And again, Octarine benefits a few people here. It uh, definitely benefits the uh, Ogre Magi, so we can, can repeatedly cast Bloodlust. It uh, certainly benefits the Bristleback. You can take the uh, the Blade Mail off Bristleback and give him the Octarine. Uh, you know, it's even gonna benefit Doom. Doom has a pretty long cooldown on this, but you bring about down to 14 seconds there's a chance he gets multiple casts in on doom but you're probably gonna end up with something like a blade mail on doom because he's the third that's gonna get that type of item but overall guys oh and magnus of course magnus is in power benefits from octarine as well but guys this is an absolutely amazing build i hope it, uh, you find success with it in the dota underlords meta thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to everyone who subscribes take care and have yourselves a wonderful day